Okay, in part two of our study, we know that Yeshua HaMashiach is allowed to fulfill all scripture written within the eight chapters of Song of Solomon because of the fact that Song of Solomon has 117 verses in it, and this does point directly to Psalm 117, the 595th chapter of the KJV Bible, the middle chapter of the KJV Bible, knowing there are 594 chapters from Genesis 1 to Psalm 116, and 594 chapters from Psalm 118 to Revelation 22. Song of Solomon has eight chapters with a total of 117 verses in it, and we know this points to the eight books of Genesis, Exodus, and Leviticus that has a total of 117 chapters from Genesis 1 to Leviticus 27, and Matthew, Mark, Luke, John, and Acts that has 117 chapters in it from Matthew 1 to Acts chapter 28. We know that Noah was 595 when Lamech died at 777 years of age, five years before the flood, and that five years later Noah entered the ark at the age of 600. Psalm 122 is the 600th chapter of the KJV Bible, and 61 plus 61 is 122. It really cannot be a coincidence that Second Peter has 61 verses in it, pointing to the 61 verses in Song of Solomon chapters 1 through 4. It really does prove the two become one flesh in Song of Solomon 4.16, the 61st verse of Song of Solomon, um, which is the last verse of Song of Solomon chapter 4. And we know that Lamech dying at 777 years of age when Noah was 595, we know that this um, points to the fact that uh, the bride is marked by perfection. Um, as it is clear in Revelation 21.9, she is marked by three sevens. Um, where Yohanan makes clear, And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither. I will shew thee the bride, the Lamb's wife. And we know the five wise virgins who do go out to meet the groom and the bride, according to Matthew 25, 1, um, in Matthew's original Aramaic scriptures, they really are meek, um, mentioned in Matthew 5, 5. And from Matthew 5, 5 to Matthew 25, 7, 777 inclusive verses. They know nothing is too hard for Adonai Elohim, as proven in the 777th chapter of the KJV Bible, Jeremiah chapter 32. And so the bride, we know, is represented by three sevens in Revelation 21, 9, and she knows her blessed hope of Titus 2, 13 is the 6,777th verse of the New Testament within the KJV Bible um, from the first verse, which is obviously Matthew 1.1. 1, 1. She knows her blessed hope is to be his favorite one, his dove of Song of Solomon 6.9, who will leave this earth, Revelation 18.23, when Yeshua HaMashiach cries out to her, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away fulfilling Song of Solomon 2.10, which will take place in the first watch of the night. She will be translated. And so this does prove the account written um, in Psalm 61. It was given to King David by the royal Kakadesh. And we know that this psalm within the King James Version Bible has eight verses in it. Um, and it points to the eight chapters of Song of Solomon. And in this psalm, King David prophesies about the vows the bride, the lamb's wife, will make um, after she is translated up in the first watch of the night during the Psalm 45 wedding ceremony. Um, and the vows she will keep, you know, for a thousand years and forever after the judgment seat of Mashiach. Psalm 61, King James Version. Hear my cry, O God, attend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. And so she knows that Yeshua HaMashiach Adonai Elohim is her rock. 
um, he is her beloved and she knows that you know he will cry out to her raise up my love my fair one and come away when she sees her blessed hope take place of Titus 2 13 um, for thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy I will abide in thy tabernacle forever I will trust in the covert of thy wings Selah for thou O God hast heard my vows Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Thou wilt prolong the king's life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. O oh, prepare mercy and truth, which may preserve him. So will I sing praise unto thy name forever, that I may daily perform my vows. And so we can see here that in verse 5, for thou, O God, hast heard my vows. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and she is wisdom. Um, you know, she will daily perform her vows for a thousand years and forever afterwards. And those who walk with wisdom towards those that are without, redeeming the time, they truly are born again and saved. Um, and they are in alignment of Colossians 4 or 5, where Paul makes clear, walk with wisdom towards those that are without, redeeming the time. Next, we know that Isaiah 61 speaks of the bride, who is in fact wisdom, in verse 10, so we must take a careful look at this very prophetic chapter, um, events that will transpire during the millennial reign of Yeshua the Messiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. And we know the meek of Matthew 5.5 5 are the five wise virgins, not the five foolish, because it is clear that from Matthew 5.5 5 to Matthew 25.7, 7, 777 inclusive verses. Um, the meek know they are about to meet the groom and the bride. Um, when the spirit of the bride shout out come, uh, fulfilling Revelation 22, 17 in the first watch of the night. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And they shall build the old wastes, they shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. This will take place after Gog, prophesied about in Ezekiel 39.11, is killed. And I am thinking that Gog of Ezekiel 39.11, um, who started the Gog and Magog war, um, you know, he will be killed. He is the anti-Messiah, um, the Antichrist of Revelation 13. And um, after the Antichrist is killed and the false prophet, um, then the burying um, of many, many corpses will take place. And um, this will be when this verse comes to pass. And they shall build the old wastes. They shall raise up the former desolations, and they shall repair the waste cities, the desolations of many generations. And strangers shall stand and feed your flocks, and the sons of the alien shall be your plowmen and your vine dressers. But ye shall be named the priests of the Lord. Men shall call you the ministers of your God, of our God. Ye shall eat the riches of the Gentiles. And in their glory shall ye boast yourselves. For your shame ye shall have double, and for confusion they shall rejoice in their portion. Therefore in their land they shall possess the double, everlasting joy shall be unto them. For I the Lord love judgment, I hate robbery, for burnt offering, 
and I will direct their work in truth. I will make an everlasting covenant with them. And so we know that the tribulation period following the rapture will be a time of Jacob's trouble, as proven in Jeremiah 30, verse 7. But it will also be the time of the heathen, as proven in Ezekiel 30, verse 3. Um, and so Jacob will be saved out of it, um, as proven in Matthew 24. And so we know that he will make an everlasting covenant with them, as proven right here in verse 8. And their seed shall be known among the Gentiles, and their offspring among the people. All that see them shall acknowledge them, that they are the seed which the Lord hath blessed. Isaiah 61.10 I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for he hath clothed me with the garments of salvation. He hath covered me with the robe of righteousness, as a bridegroom decketh himself with ornaments, and as a bride adorneth herself with her jewels. And, you know, his queen, uh, who will fulfill Psalm 45, 9, she will wear the Isaiah 61, 10 jewelry um, when she wears her wedding dress woven with the gold of Ophir, um, fulfilling um, Psalm 45, verse 9 and 13. And she will also wear her Song of Solomon, chapter 7, verse 1, uh, shoes. They will be the most beautiful shoes ever created. Um, she will be um, absolutely gorgeous in her attire, you know, right before she is crowned queen. Uh, verse 11, For as the earth bringeth forth her bud, and as the garden causeth the things that are sown in it to spring forth, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring forth before all the nations. And this will happen during the millennial reign. When you add 61 for Psalm 61, 61 for Isaiah 61, the 61 uh, verses of Song of Solomon chapters 1 through 4, and 61 for the 61 verses of Second Peter, you get the following. Um, 61 plus 61 is 122. And 61 plus 61 is 122 um, for a total of 244. And we know the 244th chapter of the New Testament from Matthew chapter 1 is Revelation chapter 6, knowing that there are 260 chapters from Matthew 1 to Revelation 22. Revelation chapter 6, verse 17, mentions the great day of wrath. And it is clear, Yohanan questions who will be able to stand in this verse. Let us take a look. Revelation 6, 17, King James Version. For the great day of his wrath is come, and who shall be able to stand? With this being said, the Ruach HaKadosh led me to calculate the symbol gematria, A1, M13, Z26, of the following word Yeshua gave me just a few hours ago. My wife and I will fulfill all scriptures within Song of Solomon. This word in simple Demetria totals 678, and Song of Solomon chapter 7 is the 678th chapter of the KJV Bible, knowing that Genesis 1 is the first chapter and Malachi 4 is the 929th chapter. Next, we need to examine the number of inclusive chapters from Song of Solomon chapter 5 to Luke 24 and define the inclusive count number in Strong's Greek Concordance. There are 322 inclusive chapters from Song of Solomon 5 to Luke 24, and 322 according to Strong's Greek Concordance means to proclaim anyone as elected to office, to announce as appointed a king, general, etc., queen, to lift up anything on high and exhibit it for all to behold. A point show forth. Song of Solomon, chapter 5, King James Version. I am come into my garden, my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with my honey. I have drunk my wine with my milk. Eat, O friends, drink, yea, drink abundantly, O beloved. I sleep, but my heart waketh. It is the voice of my beloved that knocketh, saying, Open to me, my sister, my love, my dove, my undefiled, for my head is filled with dew, 
and my locks with the drops of the night. I have put off my coat. How shall I put it on? I have washed my feet. How shall I defile them? My beloved put in his hand by the hole of the door, and my bowels were moved for him. I rose up to open to my beloved, and my hands dropped with myrrh, and my fingers with sweet smelling myrrh upon the handles of the lock. I opened to my beloved, but my beloved had withdrawn himself and was gone. My soul failed when he spake. I sought him, but I could not find him. I called him, but he gave me no answer. The watchmen that went about the city found me. They smote me. They wounded me. The keepers of the walls took away my veil from me. I charge you, O, da o daughters of Jerusalem, if ye find my beloved, that ye tell him that I am sick of love. And this proves that the bride, um, she is sick of earthly love. What is thy beloved more than another beloved? O thou fairest among women, what is thy beloved more than another beloved that thou dost charge us? And so this proves that she really is sick of earthly love. Um, I am thinking that the bride is over the age of 40. Um, we know that 40 symbolizes trial and testing. And the Jewish people, um, they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, okay? Um, from 1446 BC to 1406 and they could have wandered in the wilderness for just a few short years but they didn't they wandered in the wilderness for 40 years and it's a foreshadow of the bride being uh, at least 40 years of age if not older okay because she is going through fiery trials and tribulations and you know 40 symbolizes trial and testing um, and obviously a 40 year old woman or somebody older than 40, you know, she would obviously be sick of love as proven, um, in verse eight, you know, she definitely is sick of earthly love and she wants her true beloved. Um, and so to continue with verse 10, my beloved is white and ruddy, the chiefest among 10,000. Um, his head is as the most fine gold. His locks are bushy and black as a raven. His eyes are as the eyes of doves by the rivers of waters, washed with milk and fitly set. His cheeks are as a bed of spices, as sweet flowers, his lips like lilies dropping sweet-smelling myrrh. His hands are as gold rings set with beryl. His belly is as bright ivory overlaid with sapphires. His legs are as pillars of marble set upon sockets of fine gold his countenance is as lebanon excellent as the cedars his mouth is most sweet yea he is altogether lovely this proves that they french kiss again um this is my beloved and this is my friend o daughters of jerusalem he definitely is deeply in love with her because obviously in part um in part one um, in 13a video um, you know French kissing obviously proves you know in Song of Solomon 4 um, you know that he knows what the inside of her mouth tastes like honey and milk and so here in chapter 5 verse 16 um, we see that they French kiss again you know his mouth is most sweet yea he is altogether lovely this is my beloved and this is my friend O daughters of Jerusalem you know she proclaims this after they consummate their their wedding now we have to examine how many inclusive chapters there are from Song of Solomon chapter 6 to Luke 24 and find the inclusive count number in Strong's Greek Concordance there are a total of 321 inclusive chapters from Song of Solomon 6 to Luke 24, and we know that this chapter is the 677th chapter of the KJV Bible. 677 means blameless or without spot or sin, according to Strong's Greek Concordance for 677. And so, knowing that Song of Solomon chapter 6 to Luke 24 is 321 inclusive chapters, we know that 321, according to Strong's Greek Concordance, means to lead up, to lead or bring into a higher place, to bring up. Song of Solomon, Chapter 6, King James Version. 
Whither is thy beloved gone, O thou fairest among women? Whither is thy beloved turned aside, that we may seek him with thee? My beloved is gone down into his garden, to the beds of spices, to feed in the gardens, and to gather lilies. I am my beloved's, and my beloved is mine. He feedeth among the lilies. Thou art beautiful, O my love, as Tirzah, comely as Jerusalem, terrible as an army with banners. Turn away thine eyes from me, for they have overcome me. Thy hair is as a flock of goats that appear from Gilead. And I do believe um, that this proves that her hair before the rapture and after the rapture is naturally curly, naturally wavy. And so she knows what her hair looks like and she knows that her hair will remain naturally curly after the rapture. Um, it's like a flock of goats that appear from Mount Gilead and so it is naturally curly. Um, thy teeth are as a flock of sheep which go up from the washing, whereof every one beareth twins, and there is not one barren among them. As a piece of a pomegranate are thy temples within thy locks. There are threescore queens and fourscore concubines and virgins without number. My dove, my undefiled, is but one. She is the only one of her mother. She is the choice one of her that bare her. The daughters saw her and blessed her, yea, the queens and the concubines, and they praised her. And this will happen during the Psalm 45 wedding ceremony um, and during the marriage supper of the Lamb celebration outlined in Revelation 19. Um, who is she that looketh forth as the morning, fair as the moon, clear as the sun, and terrible as an army with banners? And this does, um, this does I believe, um, describe her complexion. Um, you know, we know that he is the son of righteousness and we know that the moon, um, reflects, um, the rays, um, of the sun. You know, he is the son of righteousness and we know that the rays of the sun shine on the moon at night and that's what gives the moon its glow at nighttime. And we know that prior to the rapture and after the rapture, um, her complexion is that of the moon. She is fair complected. Okay. Um, I went down into the garden of nuts to see the fruits of the valley and to see whether the vine flourished and the pomegranates budded. Or ever I was aware, my soul made me like the chariots of Amenadab. Return, return, O Shulamite, return, return, that we may look upon thee. What will ye see in the Shulamite? as it were the company of two armies. Next, we should examine 320 chapters, inclusive chapters from Song of Solomon chapter 7 to Luke 24, to realize that the shoes in verse 1 really are the shoes she will wear when she wears her wedding dress woven with the gold of, gold of Ophir of Psalm 45. 320, according to Strong's Greek Concordance, means knowing, a knowing again, owning, a recognition, reading. We should take note that 320 means um, full recognition and that recognition in this sense means to identify a specific person, you know, the queen of Psalm 45, 9, or an individual by a physical characteristic or something that tells us who this person really is. People will recognize Yehoshua's dove, who is but one, when she wears her um, Song of Solomon 7 1 wedding shoes when she wears her wedding dress woven with the gold of Ophir of Psalm 45. Song of Solomon chapter 7, starting with verse 1. How beautiful are thy feet with shoes, O prince's daughter! The joints of thy thighs are like jewels, the work of the hands of a cunning workman. Thy navel is like a round goblet, which wanteth not liquor. Thy belly is like an heap of wheat set about with lilies. Thy two breasts are like two young rows that are twins. Thy neck is as a tower of ivory. Thine eyes like the fish pools of Hezbon by the gate of Bathrabim. Thy nose is as the tower of Lebanon, which looketh toward Damascus. Thine head upon thee is like Carmel and the hair of thine head like purple. The king is held in the galleries. 
How fair and how pleasant art thou, O love, for delights! This thy stature is like to a palm tree, and thy breast to clusters of grapes. I said, I will go up to the palm tree. I will take hold of the boughs thereof. Now also thy breast shall be as clusters of the vine, and the smell of thy nose like apples. So I'm going to go ahead and read verse 9 and 10. And the roof of thy mouth, like the best wine, for my beloved that goeth down sweetly, causing the lips of those that are asleep to speak. And so this proves that they French kiss once again, and this is for an extended period of time because he is madly in love with her. Verse 10, I am my beloved's, and his desire is toward me. This is where um, he makes love to her again. He is deeply in love with her. Come, my beloved, let us go forth into the field. Let us lodge in the villages. Let us get up early to the vineyards. Let us see if the vine flourish, whether the tender grape appear and the pomegranates bud forth. There will I give thee my loves. And that will be in the lodging mansion mentioned in John 14 too. Um, that will be within the holy city, the New Jerusalem. The mandrakes give a smell and at our gates are all manner of pleasant fruits, new and old, which I have laid up for thee, O my beloved. Lastly, we should definitely examine the 319 inclusive chapters from Song of Solomon 8 to Luke 24 and align the meaning of the number 3, 319 with the scriptures found in Song of Solomon 8. 319, according to Strong's Greek concordance, means to recognize, to make oneself known, to make known. Song of Solomon, chapter 8, King James Version. O oh, that thou wert as my brother, that suck the breast of my mother. When I should find thee without, I would kiss thee, yea, I should not be despised. I would, lead, I would lead thee and bring thee into my mother's house. Who would instruct me? I would cause thee to drink of spiced wine of the juice of my pomegranate. His left, his left hand should be under my head, and his right hand should embrace me. And this is another very intimate moment that they will have within their lodging mansion, um, within the holy city, the New Jerusalem. Verse 4, I charge you, O daughters of Jerusalem, that ye stir not up, nor awake my love, until he please. Who is this that cometh up from the wilderness, leaning upon her beloved? I raised thee up under the apple tree. There thy mother brought thee forth. There she brought thee forth that bare thee. Set me as a seal upon thine heart, as a seal upon thine arm. For love is strong as death. Jealousy is cruel as the grave. The coals thereof are coals of fire, which hath a most vehement flame. Many waters cannot quench love, neither can the floods drown it. If a man would give all the substance of his house for love, it would utterly be condemned. We have a little sister, and she hath no breasts. What shall we do for our sister in the day when she shall be spoken for? If she be a wall, we will build upon her a palace of silver, and if she be a door, we will enclose her with boards of cedar. I am a wall, and my breasts like towers. Then was I in his eyes as one that found favor. And her, her breasts will look like towers when she wears her wedding dress woven with the gold of Ophir. And it will be like love at first sight. You know, he will be enthralled with her beauty. And that's when they will be deeply in love with each other. Verse 11. Solomon had a vineyard in Baal Haman. He let out the vineyard unto keepers, every one, for the fruit thereof was to bring a thousand pieces of silver. My vineyard, which is mine, is before me. Thou, O Solomon, must have a thousand, and those that keep the fruit thereof two hundred. Thou that dwellest in the gardens, the companions hearken to thy voice, cause me to hear it. 
make haste, my beloved, and be thou like to a roe or to a young heart upon the mountains of spices. I hope this message blesses you, and I hope this careful examination of the eight chapters of Song of Solomon, um, which does fall in the Luke 24, 44 category, um, blesses each and every one of you, and I hope we fly home soon when the spirit and the bride shout out come to the five wise virgins of today's society. He will fulfill every jot and tittle of every verse of this very romantic book with his wife. Shalom.